I spent the last five years at Site Builder Report publishing in-depth reviews of website builders. I go a little overboard. Uh, I test customer support response time. I test billing practices with my own credit card. I do everything I can. But this video is going to be the opposite of in-depth. I'm going to move really quickly and try to give you a bird's eye view of the top 30 website builders. If you want to go more in-depth, check out my website, sitebuildereport.com. I'm going to start with the best and end with the worst. If you want to be entertained, I suggest watching to the very end. Uh, some of the worst website builders are like cartoon supervillains with how they treat their customers. So let's start with uh, my two highest recommendations, Weebly and Squarespace. Both are excellent choices. I highly recommend Squarespace. If you're a podcast listener, uh, you've probably heard their advertisements before. That's squarespace.com. Use the offer code Joe. Um, Squarespace is just a great product. Uh, the themes are stunning and they offer the broadest features of any website builder. What I love is how they manage to balance ease of use and sophistication. Now Weebly is what I recommend to people who want something easy to use. Weebly has done an incredible job of including tons of features without ever feeling difficult to use. Uh, they offer e-commerce, email marketing, and an app store. So you can actually end up using Weebly for a lot more than just your website. Next up are three really strong website builders. You're gonna be in great hands if you use them. Strikingly, uh, it's the best way to create one-page websites. It's their specialty, so they do it really well. Uh, if you want a one-page website, just use Strikingly. Vogue is the best option for people who need a multilingual website. For example, I'm Canadian, and in Canada, some websites need French and English versions. Boog has the best tools to do that. Wix has a drag and drop interface. Uh, it lets you drag just about anything, anywhere. It's like a blank canvas. It's a great option for people who want detailed control over everything. Like Squarespace and Weebly, it also has a massive feature set. From here, the list of website builders starts to get pretty long, so I'm gonna start moving fast. Next up are website builders that are good, but not quite great. Ucraft. Uh, it's a good option for people with an eye for design uh, or that have like great photography that they're just ready to plug into a website. XPRS has beautiful themes, but they haven't yet built out a full feature set for things like blogging and e-commerce. Yola, simple, but has a clunky interface and lacks features. Web starts, um, they always seem to be improving. Uh, and like Wix, they let you drag elements anywhere on a page. So users who want precise control of everything, they're gonna like that. WordPress.com is not actually WordPress. It's a service built on top of WordPress to turn WordPress into a website builder. It has great blogging features, but not much else. I like to say that it lacks a sense of identity. It's not quite WordPress and it's not quite a website builder. The best thing about Zoho Sites is its powerful form builder. Though it might intimidate some people, other people are gonna find that really helpful and handy. Due to one, tricky to use, uh, but it has an impressive selection of responsive themes. Snap Pages hits the basics. Uh, it's solid, but there's just not much beyond that. UKIT, easy to use, but ends up being pretty simple. Vistaprint, uh, they launched a new website builder last year, and it's a big improvement. Uh, it's simple and easy to use. One minor note about Vistaprint that might bug you, they make uh, they make you add a credit card in order to use the free trial. So people may forget and accidentally pay for it, and that's kind of lame. Now here are some, web, some website builders that I don't recommend. Jimdo, it's a basic website builder, but they need to update their themes. The themes are outdated. GoDaddy, they've taken a step backwards in recent years. They advertise that their website builder lets you build a website in less than an hour, but that just means their website builder ends up being way, way too simple. Webnode, uh, they lack theme customization. For example, you can't choose a custom color for text on your website, and that's just too cookie cutter. Cinder, uh, it's just too simple. It's a fill in the blank approach to building a website. Google Sites is great for intranets and wikis, but don't build a small business website uh, on it. That's just not what it's meant for. Moonfruit, um, they have bad themes and a really outdated uh, user interface. Now I'm going to close by mentioning the website builders you should avoid. Um, they're frankly, they're just, they're bad. Web.com, they have horrible billing practices. In fact, if you read their terms of service, they explain that their monthly plans are 28 days long. 
So that means you end up paying 13 months in a year. Uh, yeah, that sucks. iPage, uh, it's a predatory company. During checkout, they will automatically check off upgrades without telling you. And when you cancel their website, at least in my case, they added a bogus cancellation fee. Um, they tried to charge me a $15 domain registration fee, even though I hadn't added a domain name to my account. One-on-one, -on -one, uh, it's a confusing mess, and I've had a terrible time canceling one-on-one -on -one in the past. For example, their invoicing system invoiced me long after I'd canceled my account. When I called them up and explained the situation, the customer service agent told me, sometimes the system generates crazy invoices, but don't worry, because now that you've called, you won't be charged. Billing systems should not generate uh, crazy in invoices. That's, that's not a bug. Um, Angel Fire been around forever and they're just too old. They're way behind on technology and they're not gonna be catching up anytime soon. Homestead, uh, their blog hasn't been updated in 10 months. Same with their Twitter account. Their Facebook page has uh, one post in the last two years. This video is being recorded September 2017 and their homepage still says copyright 2016. Their best days are long gone. I loved Verb, uh, but they got acquired by GoDaddy and they have since been abandoned. Shouldn't use it, it's no longer being actively maintained. Websitebuilder.com, SiteBuilder.com, and Sitely are all the same product from the same company. Be very vigilant when you pay for these website builders. They automatically add uh, add-ons to your shopping cart without telling you, so you can end up paying for items uh, you didn't mean to. Uh, and if you, uh, if you have to cancel, they'll flat out ignore you over and over again. Um, I've had to follow up multiple times over email in order to cancel. And then even after I canceled this company, I waited about two months to see if they would process my refund like they said they would, and they didn't. Uh, so I got in touch to ask for my money back, and they told me the refund was not processed earlier when the account was canceled. Uh, that's unfortunate. How does that happen? How do you not process a refund? Um, that's not a thing that should happen. So uh, avoid websitebuilder.com, sitebuilder.com, and Sitely. Thanks for watching. My day job is running Site Builder Report. Um, it's where you can find all my in-depth reviews of website builders. Uh, you can check it out right here.